going to demonstrate a process here uh, for instant, uh, near instant rusting, oxidation. Um, <coughs> the nice thing about this process is that it happens very quickly and it can be neutralized so that once it's sealed the oxidation doesn't keep going on. The product that we'll be demonstrating is called Japanese Brown and it is available through Sculpt Nouveau, Ron Young, in um, California. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where, phone number 800-728-5787. And I know personally that they've been very, very helpful. The product itself is fairly innocuous. It, uh, I have got it on my skin and it doesn't seem to be caustic in any way. It's not like using something like fer ferric chloride or one of the acids, muriatic or acid, something like that. Uh, there's two ways to apply this and of course in any type of an application where you're dealing with chemicals you always have gloves on, I have my safety glasses on, um, take all precautions that you should when handling anything that uh, is other than water. Um, there's two application procedures, one is hot, one is cold. The cold is literally just room temperature and uh, I'm pouring just some in a uh, cup here. You can brush it on, you can spray it on with a, a hand sprayer, uh, you can spray it on with uh, other air induced sprayers, you can dab it on with a sponge or a, a brush for different model defects. I'm going to do the two procedures. One is the first I'll do with the the cold process. And the cold process I've taken and done a light blast on the on the steel. This is just regular mild steel. Done a light blasting on it. You can abrade it with a steel brush, uh, mechanically uh, power brush. The thing is, is that it needs to be extremely clean. That's why I use the the um, the sandblast. If you put it on something that has a uh, mill scale on it, it won't have any effect or very minimal effect on it. So we have a, uh, a nice clean surface. If you handle it, you should clean it with uh, denatured alcohol, uh, acetone. There's a little action, as you can see, that's happening right away. And it, uh, there is some foaming and some brown happening. Your best bet on this is a couple of applications and leave it overnight. If you don't have time to do that, you can do what they call the hot, I call the warm process. I'll leave this one and over the next uh, oh, 12 hours or so, I'll put another coat or two on there. It's sort of, it'll, it'll not dry evenly. It will have little puddles on it and it'll make for a very nice modeling effect. Here I have a, just a piece of regular tube steel. And when they say do it in the hot process, it's really not very hot at all. I'm just using a little uh, uh, MAP gas heater. Uh, and all you have to do is, you're probably aware that when you first put the heat on a piece of steel, you'll see moisture form. As soon as that moisture disappears, that's warm enough. It's not very hot at all. So uh, hoping you can pick this up. There's the, the moisture forming, and then as I run it right down, it's gone. It's gone. The heat has vaporized the <coughs> water, and that's all the heat that it takes. So that when I put this on, you'll see immediately a little bit of steam rising off of it. Uh, and depending upon how quickly you want this to happen, uh, you could just leave it like this now, let it set for a while. You can see the darkening that's already happening. But if you really want a nice dark and somewhat even, heat it again a little bit. Just, just heat it a little bit more until it's dry. It, not very much at all. Put another application on. You can see the rusting that's already happening very quickly. And again, it's not very caustic. You don't, I mean, if you get it on steel, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rust it. You can see how dark this has gotten already, and it's drying off. So what I'm going to do now is uh, maybe just as long as this is here, I'm going to take and this is almost dry. You can see the rusting that's happening. But this rust will somewhat come off, but I'm going to put another 
application on there's a little more foaming and this will be much more of a modeled kind of effect just because of the way the liquid sits on it the Japanese brown sits on it this will be much more of a uniform and you can see the kind of uh, colors it's almost dry right now so I'm going to pause till this dries and it'll just be a minute or two okay now the the uh, Japanese brown has already dried up and you can see the kind of coloration here that we're talking about uh, nice dark brown and it is somewhat already pretty uh, tight to the steel rub it off hardly any of it comes off and the manufacturer Ron Young recommends that you wait overnight 24 hours for the color to set I've done it uh, right away in fact that's what I'm going to do now he recommends neutralizing this um, I've done it both ways and we should always follow manufacturers directions on this and he just uses acetone so I'll get the acetone neutralize it again acetone is very flammable it is uh, somewhat toxic so make sure that you take all appropriate precautions and we simply just wipe over like this neutralize a little has come off not much it really adheres very nicely and then I use something like a permalac or a incolac or something depending upon the uh, application whether it's going to be interior or exterior I will use the appropriate clear coat uh, permalac works pretty good just give it a nice light coat and then while that's drying I want to show the effect of uh, the Japanese brown on copper with co this is just a piece of copper that I've forged for a, it was a study piece for something or another I don't know what but uh, again with this it can be done hot or cold to see the more dramatic effect we're going to do it hot but again hot is really just warm there's the moisture appearing there it's disappearing and that's as hot as it needs to be and again uh, application can be with a brush can be sprayed any type of uh, application that's convenient if you'd like it more of a modeled effect then you use sponges and again I'm going to try to accelerate this a little bit just by heating it up just a little bit here dry it off put another quick application you can see already how nice and brown that has become and We'll just set that aside and let it sit for, oh, a minute or two, nothing more. In the meantime, you can see how, because of the way the uh, Japanese brown has puddled, we're getting all different kinds of striations and different effects. You can hold it this way so some of the liquid runs. Uh, there's a lot of different options that you can do. Playing with it is, uh, of course, the, uh, the fun part of it, that you can uh, get all different types of effects. This is already that Encrolac or Permalac or whatever you're using dries very, very quickly. This is already dried. I'm going to put a second coat on. Probably a third coat is recommended. But I want to show you how nicely this, what this looks like when it's done. And um, uh, we'll take a look at it again in just a minute. If you're watching this on, uh, on YouTube, we've run out of time. And what you'll have to do is to go ahead and on YouTube find Japanese Brown Part 2. And that'll pick up where this left off. Sorry about that.